With the ever-increasing catalogue of games we own, some we even play, the space on our hard drives has grown more of a premium year on year. This was true of last generation, but in this one speed and heat are now also a big factor. And with the PlayStation 5 you have the pick of the market, and Sabrent have stepped up to deliver on all fronts with its new Rocket 4 Plus NVMe SSD and unique PlayStation 5 replacement cover, see heatsink. But is it as good as it all sounds? Let's find out. Now this review unit was sent to me by Sabrent, but like all my reviews, it is driven by an honest appraisal of the facts and the data. First things first, here I am testing the Mammoth 2TB SSD, which offers just over 7GB per second read and 6.6GB per second write. That's far less important for consoles, let me stress. But the smaller and cheaper 1TB is almost identical in speeds, bar 100MB per second or less which is likely invisible in practice. Now the extra bonus here is the single and simple aluminium SSD cover. That's aluminum for the benefit of the American audience. This actually replaces the factory fitted one, which also improves heat dispersion and simplifies fitting as it does not require attachment to the drive itself. Simply pop out your old drive or open the bay if you've not yet fitted one, drop in your spacer at the back, fit in your brand new Sabrent drive, whichever one you choose, screw it down, and then ensure you give it a good push once it's screwed down to ensure good contact and thus heat transfer once the drive is active. Now I'll cover that more a little later, but the beauty here is the simplicity and extra cooling this offers over stock. Now once we power it on with the PS5's internal speed test, not the most accurate I must stress, gives us around 6.6 gigabytes per second speed, well in excess of the internal drive of the PS5, so it exceeds the minimum requirements. Once in, let's get copying to test the throttle limits of the PlayStation 5 transfer speed. Again, as per my previous tests, we see a throttling limit slowing down the PlayStation 5 native applications and obviously giving us the highest bandwidth for PlayStation 4 titles. This is likely related to the compression techniques and the storage and library construction of games, PS5 being different to native PS4, even though they both use Kraken compression. That being predominantly the Oodle texture compression, which is probably the biggest set of space used in modern titles due to the sheer amount of composited assets that make up materials and objects in titles. This is a big benefit of the PlayStation 5 because it reduces install and native file sizes, making them much smaller than other titles on previous generations and even in its competitor in the Series X and Series S. So after a considerable amount of time copying games back and forth, we have an idea of how this drive performs, various my other tests on previous drives and the internal SSD. Obviously as before, and I covered in my previous video, the speeds are limited on the internal SSD to reduce the write speeds, and therefore the lifespan of the internal drive is extended. This doesn't happen on external drives, therefore you get the full speed. The only other additional piece of information is I'm not taking into account the actual cleanup section of the copy. So when those zero flicks to a one, this is the speed you actually get if you take that off the total time. And this is the point where it stopped copying, but it just cleans up the source drive, deletes the file, updates the operating system file structure database to say the files now moved over. And then once that's wrapped up, it then goes back to the dashboard. Um, but I've kept it consistent by using that time as well. And therefore it's consistent with my previous tests. So taking that all into account, again, as I've already covered, the internal drive is significantly slower than any external drive. So you see a huge improvement, but this is only for write speeds and really you're only going to do this once, which is when you set the drive up. And then beyond that, you're not going to see it. So the PS4, like I say, titles do have the best speeds, but the PS5 title is the one we're looking at first. So the best of the lot is Demon Souls across all of them. And the best of the bunch is the 980 Pro, which comes in just over 1.3 gigabytes per second. And the Rocket 4 comes in at 1.2 gigabytes per second. So that's a 5% delta to the Pro 980's benefit there. Very small, not notable outside of this test, but it is present. The Rocket 4 Plus itself is about 1.1% faster than the MP600. And we see similar results fluctuating before. 5 is the highest difference you'll get, but it can 
fluctuate between all the drives. Moving into the best PS4 title, in this case it was God of War, that can see just over 1.5 gigabytes per second to the 980, and just shy of that 1.4 gigabytes, 1. well, 1,480 megabytes per second for the Rocket 4 Plus. That means it's only 3% delta there, but it's 8% faster than the MP600. And again, you can see all the speeds on screen. And next, for completeness, I did a quick test installing the Order 1886, one of my personal favourite titles of last generation. And here this is testing the Blu-ray write speeds back to the drive itself. Obviously the limit here is going to be the Blu-ray read, and sure enough, we get margin of error. Just under 32 megabytes per second for the internal drive, and just over. 30 megabytes per second for the Sabrent Rocket 4. And that's going to be the same for download speeds from the internet. You're never going to max out the right speeds here, so it's not worth trying. Stop for a pint, did you? <sighs> Spider-Man to squeal. There's two more ahead. So we didn't buy these brand spanking new drives just to copy games back and forth. This is an X copy after all. No, we bought these so that we could play games on them and see benefits in both loading times and performance where they're heavily accessed in terms of SSD and obviously IO infrastructure into that GPU RAM. So let's test those loading times first. No better place to start than the amazing Spider-Man, or at least in this case, Miles Morales, the beautiful and still fun title from Insomniac back at launch on the PlayStation 5 last year, still offers exceptionally fast loading times. So we can see 4.3 seconds on the internal drive, which is bested on the Sabrent Rocket 4 here at 4 seconds, which is even faster by the tenth of a second than the 980 Pro. That means that it's better than the MP600 and the best drive of the lot, to 6.9% faster than the internal drive. That was actually a surprise to me, as was the improvement we saw in Resident Evil 8, a very fast multi-platform title that offers 2.3 seconds loading times for the internal drive, 2.1 for the 980 Pro, and that's equaled on the Sabrent Rocket 4 here. It was an outlier for the MP600 that came in at 2.7 seconds, still very, very fast loading times. And this kind of continues across all of the further tests. So Sackboy was ever slightly slower, Demon Souls was slightly faster, Ratchet and Clank was slightly slower than the 980, but give or take, they all come within very small single digit percentages of either the internal drive or the 980 Pro. Effectively, this is on par with the 980 Pro, and if you weren't testing it at this level, you simply wouldn't see it. The biggest difference I saw here was Call of Duty Vanguard. The internal drive was ever so slightly faster, 2.43 versus 2.47. So yeah, if you can spot that, well done. The next test was PlayStation 4, and as I mentioned on my previous videos, there's a limited amount of improvements you can get from the speed of these SSDs, because the core infrastructure of the API is not being utilized here. So 20.4 for God of War, 24.2 for Deus Ex Mankind. One is a tenth of a second faster than the 980 Pro and one is a tenth of a second slower, um, or thereabouts. Cyberpunk 2077 was a specific one just here because it, it essentially has an update to the actual software itself. So this is version 1.31, and this means it's around 10 seconds faster than it used to be. So they've updated the engine itself. And that means you get the fastest of the lot, 19.3 on the Sabrent drive here and 21.3 on the internal drive. Again, well within margin of error and not making a huge difference. And that really sums up the overall loading tests across the board. You can see how close all of them are. Fundamentally, the Sabrent drive is give or take the same as the 980 and arguably the same as the MP600. There isn't really a huge difference you're going to notice outside of these tests. They all do the job well, they all keep up or improve on the internal drive, and more importantly, they all add additional storage space so you can fit more games and play more and copy less. <laughs> Moving into the final stage of this testing, and that is I.O. performance. This is testing how well the drive feeds the GPU and the CPU with data. So I've picked two titles to test here. Call of Duty Vanguard is one of them. And the reason I've picked this is because it uses an online cache download system. So basically, it streams textures into your hard drive and keeps them in a cache. And then it uses those to improve the fidelity of the title. As you can see here, turning it on and off improves the visual quality of the title. Now, in my review for IGN, it was pre-launched. Uh, there were some issues with the cache system itself. It could bloat, and obviously the servers were offline. So I tested that offline. Now, online, this streaming cache can cause very occasional brief stutters that don't appear when in offline mode. 
And you also get differences in sound. Just listen here as we jump through. This is the point where it skips. So at the 50 millisecond spike, that's where it dips heavily. Listen to the sound of the scream. Now, yeah, that sounded like Jean-Claude Van Damme, but listen to that again with the online version that is streaming in data. So yeah, there's definitely a difference in terms of the sound and the visual quality I've just tested, but obviously this puts more strain on the SSD and therefore it's streaming in more data. So comparing these side by side, taking into account that the Sabrent drive did go first, so therefore the internal drive is benefiting from that cache being pre-downloaded and therefore it's reducing the amount of load it has, we still see very minor differences at the end. Throughout the run, they're very, very close, certainly within margin of error, but 300 milliseconds at this Judder point on the Sabrent drive versus 112 on the internal drive so there's definitely an engine boost here in terms of it preferring that internal ps4 drive and therefore it reduces the judder like i say though in the offline mode you don't get this at all and as you know previously i tested all three drives with probably the biggest test in terms of ssd use currently on the playstation 5 in live gameplay rift apart and obviously they came out pretty much identically average on that one minute run that heavily streams you in and out of different worlds and vortex warps from one section to the next playing the same section on the sabrent comes in almost identical there again is a slightly bigger spike and rather than multiple judders of 33 milliseconds and 50 milliseconds it's one big spike of 112 milliseconds so it presents some of the issues differently and that might be to do with how the command queues work the priority queues i don't know so this is something to bear in mind for future games it might be somewhere where it causes issues or presents these delays differently to other drives but on average it's absolutely almost identical it's it's point one of a frame slower than the other versions again well within margin of error so what's the final verdict? Well, on average, it's 2.8% better than the PS5's internal drive. So you wouldn't notice that. It's almost identical to the Pro 980. There's nothing in it. And even then, it's only 4.3% faster than the MP600. Again, nothing you would see if you weren't testing at this level. So moving into the other option, the bang for book. The one terabyte with its heatsink pack is around 6% cheaper than the 980 Pro, its nearest competitor and probably biggest competitor, with on average the same or better results. If you go for the two terabyte here, then the saving is increased to around 16%. The other benefit is the simple one stop and swap drop it offers. Heat transfer and thus longevity are improved, with the SSD now being actively cooled across the surface of the heatsink, which is now in direct contact with the drive. The lack of any gear gap between them means that unlike the PS5's cover, which could have anything from very small contact to one mil or more, a higher dissipation of heat is achieved, which is then cooled by the fan and out of the vent. This prolongs your drive's life and maintains better performance by reducing thermal throttling. The summary is the current delta to the 980 internal or even MP600 would be imperceptible outside of these tests and I suspect in sheer raw throughput the 980 would have a slight advantage but I doubt in the PS5's lifespan we will ever see that bear much fruit. Both drives are faster than the internal one and the R4 Plus offers the simplest and one of the best values on the market. Even if you're a technophobe, it is simple to fit and can almost double your storage with the one terabyte and five times that with the two terabyte. 300 or even 170 pound is certainly not cheap, but this is an investment over your PlayStation 5's lifespan. And just like memory cards from back in the day, you're going to have to buy one at some point. That means it will last five plus years easy, and that means a lot less time downloading and a great deal more time playing. And that's another video complete. If you like this or anything else that I've put together, you can obviously help by hitting the Amazon links down below and buying your drive, any drive or any items from that link. That helps me because you get the same great price, but it helps the channel because I get a few pounds and dollars. does not affect your purchase price. Or you can share and subscribe and all that good stuff, which really helps immensely. I'll catch you very soon on here or over on IGN. I'll see you on the next one. Putting down that West Coast, I gotta hit you with this NWA, always in the sun. Man, I love this track.